Perfect. Um, so thank you for joining this session. Um, I have to admit, this is probably the golden question that I'm asked every time is how to increase the downloads. And uh, I reached out to uh, Jos and Judith at Erasmus, and they're going to share some fantastic numbers with you. Um, and I, looking at the slides, there's some ideas that I've not heard before as well. So uh, looking forward to sharing them with you. Um, so to start, I'll just share some numbers uh, from Erasmus just uh, how long they've been with us, and then some usage statistics. And then like an interview style uh, questions, I'll just ask them questions and they can share. And then would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, David? thank you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, I'm David Bright. I'm the product owner working with Daniel, and uh, I'm the person responsible for sending those annoying emails with lots of animated GIFs. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the product thank you. Exactly, yes. Perfect. So at the end of the session, once we finish the Erasmus uh, feedback, then we'll look at some, I think Daniel touched on it earlier uh, with the download buttons um, and the point of need ads. Uh, we believe it's going to be a great way to uh, increase the, the downloads of the Lean Library extension. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next slide and then if possible, if you could introduce yourself, you also knew this. Uh, here we go. Of course, I don't need to introduce myself again. Yeah, over to you. Yes. Um... Hi, I'm um, Jos Westerbeke, library IT specialist at Erasmus University, and um, I'm uh, doing the access, uh, access management for, uh, for our e-resources, more the technical part of it, and uh, I'm also uh, the person in between the IT department and uh, the library. Thank you. Uh, and I'm Judith. I also work in the university library, but as a faculty liaison for philosophy and psychology. So I'm a contact person between those two departments uh, and our library. Uh, and I work with a, a team of faculty liaisons. So they are, we together are um, the ones who um, decide which database to buy, which journals to buy, uh, which are important for an assist message to appear. And um, that's what I do. Awesome. Thank you for the ideas that you both shared. I'm looking forward to showing the rest. Uh, okay, yeah, we've introduced ourselves, David. Um, as you probably can appreciate, we were born in the Netherlands, so a lot of our clients from there would, would have been with us for a number of years. But Erasmus, you have been with us. Well, would you like to tell us yours in your own voice? You have her up on the screen there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, we, yeah, April 2017, uh, it's actually we, we started a bit later with the beginning of the, the study year 2017-2018 uh, in September uh, with uh, yeah, deploying the, um, uh, the Lean Library. So that was actually our, our start. So it was September 2017. Okay, my apologies. Yes, the actual right date of the extension then was September. Okay. I, I think we bought it in April. Too, yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, <it was> just... <laughs> my apologies, took the contract line. <laughs> yeah, so like um, something that I'll share that uh, from the VU always says to me a bit later on about with increasing user, uh, usage and user downloads, it's about allowing time also. I mean, 2017, September, wow, it's four years ago this uh, this month. So I think that always plays a part in seeing these uh, big usage uh, downloads increases. So I was actually very fascinated looking through these numbers when I pulled them together for the monthly Erasmus users. So on a monthly basis, average usage of over 10,000. So 10,022. So this is a uh, there's, I think, a little internal competition within the Netherlands with uh, some of our uh, uh, long-standing customers because, yeah, there, there's three or four which have taken over the, the golden mark of 10,000. So, yeah, I, I mean, you see a dip, like with anything now coming in from the, the summer period, but with September, uh, yeah, it's going to skyrocket back up. Was there anything that you would like to share on this part? Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but please, if you'd like to say anything, you also do, Judith. Yeah, what we can say is, you see, it's uh, the, the most heavily used. It's it's in the midst of a study year, um, from uh, September to uh, 
June, I think. Um, and you see, we, the, the, it's, it's now dropping uh, down because it's the month of August is the last month you were measured here. So it's, um, and now um, our statistics um, are climbing up already uh, because of the month of uh, September. So we are now, we, now, we do now have uh, 8,826 uh, 8, users actually. Right ah, okay, so we are climbing up to the, I, we hope so, to the 10,000 uh, again. Uh, this year. Exactly. Maybe, yeah. ho hopefully a bit more. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Maybe I can add something. Yeah, please. While looking at the statistics, I thought, oh, what happened uh, last year in March when we all had to work from home? Um, but then we, I, I, so I think we, we gained about 700 users in the month of uh, March. So that's, so we already had a very high number of user, users before we went working um, remotely. Uh, yeah. remote, but then it uh, kept climbing. That's awesome. That's, that's great to see these numbers, isn't it? Uh, when we see the next page, which is a breakdown of um, some of the feature usage. <clears throat> so how do these numbers translate to usage? So on a monthly basis, we highlight 29,225 times to say that there's an article avail available within the Erasmus collection. So for example, when a user or patron of Erasmus arrives at the paywall for an article, then we surfaced the, the pop-up to say that actually this, this article is available but it's in a different location. And then on a monthly basis, the open access is 2,875. And the eBooks, and this I think is a trend that most people will see increase in 10,839 highlighted books that are available in the collection. So that's when you use as a Trowering uh, Google Scholar, sorry, Google, Google Books, Amazon, we surface these pop-ups. I was quite surprised with the easy proxy authentications. So 96,000 times we've simplified the easy proxy process to give the users of Erasmus that on-campus feeling when they are working remote. And the next slide as well, Judith, is in relation to the assist messages. Um, but thank you for sending the comments through on email the other day. So on a monthly basis, uh, 15,600 uh, mess uh, message displays for the assist messages ranging from messages on Google Scholar, and we have some examples on the next page. Yeah. So we have a question there is how are we defining a user and how are we tracking this data? A user is anybody who uses the extension at least one time in the month. And then we have a dashboard um, that the library admins can access to show you how many downloads. And then this part is taken from here as well. We can say actually, we've redirected this many users to a, um, a free version open access article or the eBooks. And then 1.5 million times we've surfaced, surfaced citations from site.ai, 1.5 million. And this has only been since March to August. So if anybody is unfamiliar with site, we have a, an integration which we can provide citation context when users are now arriving at an article level. So yeah, some pretty fantastic numbers there. And I think that everybody strives to get within these regions. So uh, well done, Yoss and Judith. It's, it's great stuff. So <clears throat> next slide here. So these are some examples um, of the assist messages, Judith. Yeah, I, I didn't know if the 15,000 is high, but uh, I just want to say that we have a, if you want to raise that number, make an alert uh, assist message on Google Scholar, because then uh, <laughs> exactly. sure you, you will get a high number. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I thought maybe it's good um, uh, also to show some other examples. So Google Scholar is uh, our number one with a very high number of assist messages, but then uh, second was uh, Clear Navigator, which is yes, a exactly. Dutch database. Uh, and we use the assist to tell people, this is how you get access because it's not uh, via easy proxy. This is the button you have to click. Uh, for PsychNet, um, which is a very much used database, but we have it on a different platform. So we have a sys message that says, go here. Uh, and the, the fourth one is a journal, which we have on a different platform as well. Um, and these are the, our top four. Uh, I thought it was nice to share. Yeah, definitely. And if anything, the Google Scholar is just a confirmation that most users go there, no? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, perfect. 
And yeah, I was interested to see the, and excuse my Dutch pronunciation, but the Kluver Navigator as the second highest also. But that's a, sometimes a databases or uh, e-resources can't be opened via proxy or via open Athens or shibboleth. They have to be done via username and password. And of course, that's just a, another level of confusion that users have to uh, contend with. So great stuff. Um, and if you're happy with it, or if it would be okay to share some of these slides with anybody in the audience who wants to see these examples. Okay. Um, I think this question, um, we'll skip to the next one because over the next few slides, we kind of, this is the content that we'll cover. Uh, but I've kind of positioned her in a way, sorry, David, you're not, come on. Yes. Can everybody see David? There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, Jos will explain it from the IT specialist. And it's, I think when you uh, made the point that you're the connection, you're the conduit between the library and IT and you did you for the, the faculty, you know, and I think that's so important, that relationship between both. <clears throat> and I think it just goes to figure when you look at your, your usage statistics. So Jos, what advice can you give to someone who takes care of access or takes care of IT access and systems? Yeah, so, um... We have indeed uh, fantastic numbers, uh, but the great question is, what, what tricks do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a bit disappointing for you, but um, I think there's one word which is uh, very important, and that's uh, simplicity. Simplicity of the tool and simplicity in, 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 in communication. So um, the overall communication uh, about uh, the lean, lean library uh, tool. I think you, you have to keep it simple and clear uh, for, the, for the public. Uh, tell it in a brief way. Uh, make it easy to, to get and easy to use. So especially no software installation um, hurdles, etc. And um, yeah, just sharing it in a, in a simple way. So I, I think that's, that's the answer for us. We don't have a big promotion. Uh, we don't do, we didn't do it, a big promotion. So we, we, we just uh, describe it on our website. We did some promotion on the website and um, uh, we also promote it in, the, in our uh, narrow, uh, narrow casting systems, but yeah, that's the, the, the main basic promotion. And um, yeah, Judith will tell a bit more about uh, the, the, the uh, more specific uh, promotion to students, etc. But I think the, the answer is it's just a simple tool. And, uh, you know, it's uh, like mouth to mouth. Um, uh, promotion it works works quite good in this uh, in this case so that's yeah my, my, my first answer to the keep it simple the promotion tips um about um yeah the the, the technical part we we we, we, we begun with uh, with with the access uh, tool just uh, given access and uh, half year or something or a year later we um, added the assist messages so first it's I think it's good to know that our uh, configuration was or the configuration of lean library extension was uh, yeah based on easy proxy so we all it was all based on easy proxy that was our off-campus uh, access tool easy proxy and um, when you are on campus, uh, then you have uh, straight access to the, to the resources uh, based on IP uh, authentication. So I think it's good to understand that uh, we, in the first, uh, at first we only used it on top of easy proxy access. And that works very well. Um, the IT department, the IT, the, the, the desk, the, the service desk at our campus, uh, we, we told them uh, about the, yeah, the new way of access to e-resources. 
And we just said to them, um, just use the Lean Library tool in your browser. Everyone use the browser and the Chrome is our standard browser on our university. So everyone is familiar with it and they can install the extension. And uh, since they know it too, they yeah, talk about it. They, they advise it to our students to just to use the tool. So I think that's a yeah, important uh, thing. And, uh, and our own desk, of course from the library. So we instructed uh, our, our own uh, library desk personnel. And um, yeah, yeah, so th th that's what we did for, um, for promotion. And again, the, um, the service desk also um, just uh, informed them uh, to use uh, the, the the extension and not uh, VPN because if they advise VPN the the, the come many questions uh, about VPN because it's technically much harder to configure etc for for users so it's again it was, it's the simplicity of the tool it's uh, it was to break through I think <laughs> and. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, that's the key thing is the simplicity. No, I, the amount of times that I hear that from from campaigns or initiatives to increase usage, and some librarians just keep it simple. Keep it simple. This is where you go to download it, and this is what it does. It doesn't need anything more complex than that. But that simplicity seems to be working. Yes, and and also make sure that the IT uh, whitelisted the um, uh, the extension for Chrome. So many departments do whitelisting already because of security uh, issues so make sure that uh, yeah people can install it um, directly without any hurdles exactly and another thing maybe it, when you have uh, pcs on your campus it's also good to uh, to install it beforehand uh, on the pcs so it's available at the browser at your campus pcs Definitely. Especially now, also with the futures uh, uh, extension that, uh, <laughs> and, and, and assist messages <laughs> also, they are also very important for also for on campus. So we started off campus, but now it's a tool that's also important uh, on the campus itself <laughs> for access and information. Thank you, Jos. That's awesome. Oh, we have a couple of questions. Yeah. That's a good question. Thank you, Richard. Um, do you know the percentage of uh, use from the default installation on campus uh, PCs versus the percentage of users who have downloaded it themselves? So I'm not, not sure that's going to be available. Yes, no. So do we know? <coughs> Uh, how many users have installed the extension uh, themselves compared to how many are using it from the mass installation? I can't say that. No, no. I don't know. No. Um, sorry for that, Richard. That, was a, that would be great to find out, actually. Uh, what browsers does Lean Library work with? I'm happy to say that we work with all the major browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Edge, and I think there's one or two other ones as well. But what, what I can say actually is at the beginning, they have to download itself. So we didn't start with, uh, with install it uh, by the IT department on the, on the campus PC. So at the start, they just uh, had to download it themselves. And many, many students do use their, their, their own laptops in, uh, in the library and at other study, uh, at other working uh, places in the, at the campus. Thank you so much. Okay, Judith, what advice can you give to another academic librarian that helped encourage users? Yeah, I see already one tip from Ger in the in the chat. Um, I did see it. In making sure it's uh, in the in, in your information skills workshops uh, yes. the ones you give, but also uh, when you um, okay. <laughs> welcome new students in your library. Uh, this is one of the things, uh, well, 
basically you would want to have a list and this should be one of the things to do. Yeah. Um, so what, what I include the uh, link library in my own workshops and I um, just leave uh, the tool on so, I, so students see it appear in my, um, on my computer uh, while I'm working. Uh, so they can see different examples and what really helps uh, this uh, week I had a, uh, uh, an assistant with me who was also a student uh, and it's always good to have someone next to you who's not from the library saying oh, I, I use this a lot and it really saves me a lot of time. Exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was really helpful. Um, and we um, um, found out that uh, it really also helps to target uh, the instructors, so that the people who teach uh, the students. And I'm not sure if it's on the next slide, but I had an example I found in our um, Canvas course, in one of the Canvas course. Um, a lot of the uh, uh, articles are directly linked. Uh, but uh, I've, with some, with some I saw that the, the teacher tells the student install the Chrome plugin library access. Of course, that's the old name, but still uh, he or she uh, integrated it in the in the literature list the students had. So that was another reminder for the student that it's something I need to do. Um, and um, in our case, uh, it really helps Jos and me um, that a lot of colleagues are using it themselves uh, because they are the ones who can tell us, hey, uh, here, um, an assist message could be useful, or this assist message is out of date. Uh, we have some for financial databases that Jos and I never use, uh, but then it's really helpful to have a, a colleague saying, hey, this should be changed. Uh, and our colleagues are also not shy in uh, giving uh, um, criticism, uh, where a student might think, oh, it doesn't work, um, I leave it. Uh, our colleagues will uh, uh, really uh, send screenshots and everything they expect and that helps us and uh, also lean library i think to uh, have use cases what goes good and what doesn't go so well uh, and it's also um uh, our colleagues at the at the front desk who sit at the desk and answer the phone they're really happy with it because previously they had to explain you have to make a vpn connection and then the student said but i'm now working at my internship i mean i'm not allowed to now they just have to go go to this website, download this, now it works. And it's so much easier for them to explain that as well. Um, and my colleague also, who is on the phone, who is sometimes on the phone, she said we get so hardly any questions about access anymore because it's yeah. so simple. <laughs> um, so that, that's also great. Um, and what, what we, uh, also we uh, also need in our library um, uh, is to have a workflow around um, our databases. So when a new database is bought, uh, when we get a trial, uh, or when a database is cancelled, also important. We, Jos and I, also need to know. So uh, I'm closer to that workflow than Jos, but it's really important to be, yeah, to know what's happening on that level. So maybe um, we should have someone from the license department also in our team, yeah. because they are even closer to that process. But it's a great um, idea. That works as well. I, and I forgot one thing because um, yeah, um, we use the we misuse the Lean Library logo in our lib guides, uh, in our alphabetical list, but also in our uh, guides per discipline. And the logo is used as a to, to tell people this database is accessible from home. Um, so uh, we the links are easy proxy, but this we use the logo so they will see it every time they visit our database list or our lib guide and. Hopefully that helps them get familiar. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. I really love the last one here as well, the, the workflow around trial and cancel databases. I'm definitely going to recommend that we do it for trials, but also I think it's just as important, like you say, if a database has been cancelled and you link them back to your discovery, the A to Z list of all other databases that they can be using. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with you. Or, or we use it to do an uh, assist message. And say this has been cancelled, but this is an alternative. Uh, or uh, contact your faculty liaison if you want to uh, discuss. Yeah. But it saves the user, <clears throat> it takes the frustration away, I guess, doesn't it? Because, you know, if they like that database, I can't access it, but then the librarian or the library is stepping in to offer advice and take them from a point of frustration to another uh, place where they can access content of a similar nature. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Any questions on this one, Fiona? So thank you so much both. And um, there might be questions that uh, come in, uh, but we're going to speed through David's part now because I appreciate we've probably taken up a bit more time. 
So David, over to you. I'll be as, as concise as I can. <laughs> um, so yes, I wanted to uh, just highlight some of the tools that are available for librarians to, to use that, uh, that we have now, and also peak as something that's coming in the future. Um, so existing tools we have so far on the uh, dashboard homepage, I've highlighted there in the red box that we have a, uh, a widget for promoting uh, library access. In that area, you will find links to some sample social media posts. You could use those on uh, Facebook and Twitter, wherever you uh, desire to use them. And also we've got some, uh, there's a PDF flyer in there that you can print off and uh, use around the, around the campus. Um, and also in the, on the dashboard, on the top right there, you see a link that says support. And if you were to click that, there is an area called communication material which has uh, some case studies, some animations, and the um, uh, PDFs that we just mentioned, as well as some other tips and tricks that you could use for, uh, for communicating about uh, the fact you have the extension available. Um, now we know that some of this, you know, we've got some pieces on the homepage there, we've got some areas uh, hidden in support. We are working to bring all this together into one area in the future. Um, that's a bit of a work in progress, but you know, keep checking that area. We'll be adding stuff that we think is useful uh, from time to time. The other thing that we have available to us is the uh, branded download pages. So this launched in end of July uh, this year. And really that is just a space that you, we can create a, uh, a branded download page uh, for you, for the library. Um, it carries the branding. So if anyone is uh, doing a Google search or download Lean Library, hopefully they would find something like this. They would see that there's a relationship uh, from the university and with us. So it looks bona fide and that would encourage downloads there. Um, and if you, uh, I mean, these aren't activated uh, immediately. If you want them to be activated, uh, please let us know, either me or the implementation team. Uh, but you'll see um, there's a link on, on screen. And ultimately, once you've got that activated, you'll be able to go in and edit the metadata, the title, the copy that's on that page, anything that's there that you want to edit, you can change. And hopefully that will start to really drive the downloads of uh, the extension. So that's ready and available to use. Give our friendly implementation team a shout if you want to, to uh, roll that out, that is ready to go. They are, they are poised and waiting to take your call. <laughs> um, and so that's branded downloads. And then another part that we uh, have started working through is something called uh, embedded download buttons. So on the left-hand side there, you'll see we've got kind of two versions of something that you can, uh, ultimately, <clears throat> what we think of is you can go to somewhere within the dashboard and copy a piece of generated code. So you can, there's some limitations around what you can customize, but you can do some customization and you can generate that code. And then the idea is you could drop that into anywhere. And uh, Ali, I think was on the call earlier. I've, been, I've spoken to her about using this. So there's a couple of people that are using it. If you are interested in um, using this potentially uh, to embed, you, you, essentially you can copy this code and drop it into any uh, anywhere within your uh, library systems that will take uh, a snippet of HTML. And it automatically, uh, knows which browser the user is seeing this on and will customize the download link accordingly. So if you're interested in rolling that out, please give me a shout, uh, david at leanlibrary.com and we can see around uh, rolling it out to you. It's very early uh, days, but once that we feel that that is a good solid platform uh, to use, we will roll that out to everyone once we've uh, kind of overhauled our support area uh, entirely. So that's embed buttons. <clears throat> and then something I just wanted to give you a sneak peek on, and Daniel mentioned it earlier, um, is this point of need messaging. And so what, what do we mean by that? So really we, we feel that it'd be useful for you to have a simple tool to generate uh, some promotional message widgets. Um, and you can drop those into, I think you mentioned auth pages and discovery systems, but ultimately anywhere that you can drop a piece of HTML you could uh, use this, um, but I think it would be important to do it at the, the right time. So what we're calling it a point of need. So for example, there we've got the easy proxy uh, mock-up, you know, that would be a page that people are gonna uh, hit at some point. That to me seems like a sensible place to highlight the fact you have uh, the extension available to download. Um, and so we're thinking that 
Uh, and again, I'm going to see if this works. Have I got time to prototype? Uh, yeah. Yes, I have, yeah. And so it may look something like this, and I'm going to try and hopefully, I'm going to click to something, and hopefully it works. Can, can they still see the yeah, see browser? That. Just checking if you can still uh, see no, the I screen. Know, I know yeah. it. You have to stop the share. Okay, one second. I've just got to stop the screen share. And share. No, hang on. This one. Yeah. That? Okay, so this is what a this is a very early prototype of what uh, what this uh, message generator could look like. Basically, I would go in here and I would select my institution. I'm going to go through and uh, again I keep picking on East Anglia, so I'll click that and I'll go through to the next step. And I could do some basic customization around colours and what font I wanted to use, and if I wanted to include the uh, Lean Library logo. And you'll see the preview on the right hand side would change. So uh, East Anglia have that hot pink. We would see that uh, appearing there if we wanted it to. And also we'll be able to customize the width of the uh, box that we've got there. And so and we'd offer a, cust uh, a custom size. So you can essentially drop that into anywhere. And then you could customize your message. And once you've gone through and obviously we've pre-filled it with what we think works, but you could essentially just click view and copy code and that is something that you could uh, then drop into anywhere. Again, this is only a, a early stage mock-up. If you are interested in uh, working with me on this, I'd be really, really happy to, to hear from you. Um, but yes, this is early days. We think, uh, looking at the roadmap, we, we kind of want to get this out uh, mid to end of October, um, but I will probably uh, regret saying that now. Um, so yeah, no pressure. Um, and so, yeah, if you, again, we're going to work through some of the marketing areas, the marketing promotion tools that you've got there. So keep an eye on the dashboard uh, regularly. Um, we will update it as and when we can. Um, and yeah, if anyone's got any questions for me around that, then I'm happy to answer. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you again, Judith and yours. It's a pleasure to see you both. Thank you. Very